This is the Anarchist War Journal entry number 14, and I'm going to talk about day one at the Mises Institute. We started off with a lecture presented by Professor Salerno on the birth of the Austrian School of Economics. We started off actually with Karl Menger and producing the marginal utility concept. Combining that with subjective theory of value came praxeology through Ludwig von Mises' tome, Human Action, and which he had to escape from Nazi Germany to come here to the United States to produce, to create, starting all over again, starting from scratch. And from there, of course, you find an interesting works of development on the importance, for example, of economic calculation, which is what, what ruins socialism in the long term. Uh, other areas, of course, uh, division of labor, which is very important, especially there's a article that I found again, <laughs> which is uh, really awesome, relaying the importance of division of labor. There's a guy named Andy George who sought out many months ago to create a chicken sandwich. And in order to create a chicken sandwich from from nothing, right, from, from its very beginnings, you kind of have to go out there to the ocean to get sea salt because he couldn't find anywhere he lived. There was no salt mines in Minnesota, I believe, where he's from. And so he had to go out all the way to the ocean to harvest salt water and to boil it to get the salt. He also had to grow his own garden, uh, to grow his own vegetables to use in that one sandwich which led him to eventually having to kill his own chicken, of course, so that we can have the meat and put it all together. Also, that included <laughs> harvesting wheat. He had to grow his own wheat and harvest that as well. And all these complications of, of uh, labor that he had put himself through took over six months. And for one sandwich, one chicken sandwich, it cost him over $1,500. And of course, when he was writing and talking about it, was it worth it? It was worth the experience, of course, but the amount of money it took, the amount of time it took, the labor, the energy, the productivity, and putting your entire self into the production of one chicken sandwich, uh, of course, we find that today to be ludicrous to, to do any of that all ourselves, which is why the market is a beautiful thing in creating all this division of labor, so that way... I don't really don't want to spend my time trying to build an AC unit, trying to put together a computer, much less like Leonard Reed has shown how difficult it is, how no one can produce something as simple as a pencil, right? So that's a wonderful story just to kind of show how important the market is and showing that all these people out there and pursuing their self-interest come together to produce beautiful things, beautiful products that we enjoy today uh, that sometimes we take, uh, you know, unappreciatively right that we take for granted and so all these kind of subjects all these areas of economics is very important there's a lot of fun to kind of talk about this and to see a lot of these professors uh go over them i myself have a lot of work to do now <laughs> since going to the mises institute for that whole week i've never read human action but now that is an undertaking that i have to do and of course there is a, a bookstore it's beautiful bookstore there at the Mises Institute which, uh, with real foundational knowledge, with real economics, real history. <laughs> and by walking through there, it was, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful sight to see. It was uh, awesome to see legit sources, legit information out there and the sea of lies and myths that you'll find in public schools and public universities and public libraries. It's a lot of lies. So it was, very, it was a beautiful thing to walk through that and to see that and to be part of that. Um, unfortunately, I was waiting until the last day to buy all my books. And so I got too busy recording interviews. So I have to order them online, which you can do yourself. So you don't have to really be there in person to get access to these books. You can actually go to the website, to their store, and you'll find an enormous selection of P3s, of books, of, of, of lectures. The lectures that I went to and attended to are also available for free online on their YouTube channel. So there's no excuse then, <laughs> you can say, and uh, understanding economics and having a good grasp and understanding of all these subjects and concepts of towards creating a good foundational uh, weapon to wield against uh, the mythology and lies out there that socialism puts forth and, and enslaves uh, everyone under their whip. And so I think this is a very important as part of our tools as anarchists to go out there when confronting and talking to a lot of these the people around us and providing good information, good, legit sources. And that's actually one more thing I wanted to add to this and that for the past couple of years, I have been reading 
the, the works of many of these professors here and there, uh, like De Lorenzo's and his work on uh, showing the mythology of Abraham Lincoln being the tyrant that he really was back then, and towards uh, looking at uh, Robert Murphy's uh, works and Stefan Kinsella, it's right there in the book, so you actually find his against uh, intellectual property up there as well. And I had no idea that a lot of these people were friends. <laughs> these people actually went to the same school or actually coming from the Austrian School of Economics uh, in terms of being Mesians themselves. Uh, and that from that circle of friends that these people uh, build upon, I would say, upon each other's works towards more enlightenment and finding truth and uh, pursuit of knowledge and dispelling the evils of socialism out there. And that was very refreshing and because I saw like photos up there of many of these professors and it's like going back for quite a long time, decades even, you know, there's an old photo I found in one of the hallways of Rothbard all the way to the left of Hans Hermann Hoppe all the way to the right of, uh, you know, young Tom Woods there, of a Jeffrey Tucker there, of a lot of different professors that these people have known each other for quite some time. And for me, that lent a lot of legitimacy, a lot of uh, acceptance of uh, the Mises University, the Mises Institute, as being a very legit place. I'm a very skeptical person of any organization and people I come across, but seeing that these people know each other and that the sources that I've been studying came from these professors, and all of them are good friends. A lot of them are been working for a long time together. Uh, led me at the end to realize this is this is a good place. This is a legit place. Uh, the Mises Institute is an awesome place to learn good foundational economics of truth, of um, free market anarchism. And I would recommend, of course, anyone who, who's viewing this to check it out as well. Go to the website, check out the books. Uh, many of them are available for free in PDF formats as well. So uh, I like getting the books myself. So I have a lot to order this week to add to my library here at my house. And so with that, I'm going to leave you guys off with a series of other awesome, fun interviews that I had with fellow scholars there at the Mises Institute. So thank you guys very much for watching and stay liberated. So where are you from and what brings you to the Mises Institute? I'm Italian, my name is uh, Bernardo Ferrero. And uh, what brings me to the Mises Institute is the idea of uh, spreading the message of liberty in a way which is constructive not only uh, for us libertarians in our uh, political goals, but to create a society in which in which ideas are gonna are gonna to some extent and not to a great extent influence uh, politics and society as a whole. We should put the government uh, uh, in chains not through elections, but through the spreading of ideas. Elections are the culmination of an educational process and not its beginning. Well, uh, first off, um, I'm from uh, Northern California. I come from about 50 miles northeast of Sacramento. And uh, I'm interested, very interested in Austrian economics. I've been uh, studying it just on my own for about the last uh, five years. Uh, and so uh, now that I'm in college now, I'm, I decided you know, to come over here. And uh, an economics professor at my college I go to, although I'm a computer science major, pointed me to uh, Mises University to go to. So this, uh, that's why I'm here. Hi, my name is Brian Rothman. I'm from Hazlitt, New Jersey, and I've been a libertarian for about two years now. Uh, and I come to the Mises Institute because now that I'm in college, I can travel more. And now uh, coming to the Mises Institute has been a dream of mine. And now I get to meet the professors that inspired me to become a libertarian. Where I'm from, uh, I'm originally from Brazil. Uh, right now I live in North Carolina. Uh, in college, my mentor was a uh, member of the institute he was a he was a fellow here and uh, he influenced me a lot during my economics like courses so i decided to come here for the first time last year and uh, since then i keep coming back what are your thoughts on government and should it be abolished well uh, i guess it really depends on your perspective when it comes to the government if it's uh, uh if you view it as an, an agent of violence and, and if you believe that the violence is wrong uh, then probably that should be done away with. Um, and if you if you view any action of the government as violence, uh, violating um, moral law, uh, then probably it probably should be done away with. What I think about government is uh, what do I think about power? And uh, classical liberals, libertarians, and anarchists 
have always intended power to be limited and, if possible, to be abolished. Power which is born not out of natural selection, not out of, uh, you know, talents or, uh, or, or market-driven phenomenon, you know, where the best get on top for uh, voluntary exchange, etc., but through predation. Murray Rothbard talked about history as a process, which is a class struggle, not intended as Marx intended it, but a class struggle between those who have power over nature, us, libertarians and people who exchange goods, and those who have power over men. Now, that's government. And in order to get uh, rid of it, we should spread the message of liberty and understand that power over nature is the only future for a peaceful and prosperous society. Government should definitely be abolished. I mean, the idea of public means that uh, I'm losing rights. I'm losing the right to exclude things that I don't agree with. Uh, it's not voluntary. Anything that's vo not voluntary, it's normally coerced by force. So, you know, I don't like to be, I don't like that anyone put a gun against my head. I actually, I like to. I don't like to feel threatened, so that's why government should be abolished. Uh, it should be abolished. However, unlike uh, some uh, other uh, ANCAPs, I'm more of a Burkean gradualist, so I can't. I don't believe that we could just single-handedly abolish it overnight, because there'd be riots in the streets. So what you do is you work through the system, be a par parliamentarian, and uh, gradually reform it so that people aren't freaked out by it because most revolutions have led to tyranny. Ours is the exception to the rule. What does free market anarchy mean to you? Well, anarchy means to me that private government. A lot of people have the idea of anarchy being chaos. My idea of anarchy is actually organization and, you know, voluntary choice. It's like just because we don't have a government doesn't have doesn't mean we don't have rules. The difference is that we accept those rules. We voluntarily accept those rules. And the free market, well, without free market, we we become more poor. You know, and uh, the free market is essential for the enrichment of society and the enrichment of the world. Free market anarchy means that. Uh... It's all laissez-faire. Every interaction between you and me is voluntary and consensual, and no one uh, initiates force uh, against another within a strict uh, non-aggression principle mentality. Uh, free market anarchy means three things. Mind my own business. And uh, everybody can do whatever they want as long as they respect the laws of nature, as long as they respect... Uh, the humanity of people and the idea of private property and self-ownership that is a concept that uh, is inherently or, or is the main concept of liberalism and libertarianism and uh, as uh, John Locke uh, transmitted to us and anarchy means simply uh, finding a solution to problems uh, by, by voluntary voluntarism by intelligent and by knowledge as Hayek Hayek showed us. So anarchy means for me the pursuit of common happiness through individual behavior and individual liberty. Uh, basically it just means the uh, peaceful uh, voluntary actions of individuals without any impeding upon anybody else. Uh, you say free market and you know the word freedom in its old ancient sense in the, in the Anglo-Saxon tradition basically means that you don't have any, uh, it's basically uh, liberty from the arbitrary will of another you know no one no arbitrary will is over you so uh it's it's not eliminating rules so it's not going to be chaos but it's eliminating the rulers because uh, we don't need the rulers we live by rules common sense rules of politeness not being rude every single day of our lives and we just don't need you don't use the government in those areas and so why do we need to use them in the areas of the implementation of government really that's what it really got what it was down to and the last bonus question is are you an enemy of the state yes i am I think the state is our enemy, so uh, I guess, yeah, I'm an enemy of the state. I would like to say so. I have some Rothbard glasses that I have, and so I like to wear them, and one day when my hair turns gray, I look a lot like Rothbard, and uh, they actually are real. They, they're, they're reading glasses. Uh, the state, the state, the state uh, has to be fought, and uh, the state has its own interests, so the way, the only 
as an enemy of the state, and I, yes, I am an enemy of the state, the, the only way to tackle it is to put it in a situation in which it cannot do otherwise. And uh, it is by spreading these ideas and obviously trying to fight it wherever we can, sacrificing uh, whatever we can do, because even though we might not think about the state, the state is going to think about us. So it's better to uh, bring our arms to our, to, in our hands and uh, try the best to, 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 sacrifice, to sacrifice our, 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 um, our efforts to, to, to tackle it and to make sure that individual liberty is not, is not invaded. So that's what I think. Nice, beautiful answer, man. Thank you so much. Left behind, dollar signs rule. But what about the fool who falls victim to the material world?